compensation. Let's talk about the thyroid gland and its natural compensation to weight loss. This is critical. When you begin to lose weight or gain weight, first thing you need to understand is insulin has an effect on the fat cell. And let's talk about weight gain first. Too much insulin leads to production of leptin, right? And leptin speaks to the brain and decreases hunger, okay? Leptin also goes to the adrenal glands and says, hey, adrenals, we got enough fat on our body. Let's burn some fat. And leptin also talks to the thyroid gland and says, hey, thyroid, we got enough fat on our body. Let's burn some fat. So can you guys see how the body here, it, the metabolism is acting somewhat like a thermostat? Insulin causes fat cell growth. Leptin is released. Leptin goes to the brain, adrenals, and thyroid and says, hey, let's eat less, right? And let's burn more because we got fat we need to lose. That's the normal response to the body. That's how a normal metabolism should respond. Now, sometimes when there is so much insulin and the fat cell grows too fast, we can get, or if we're dieting, either way, two things happen here. One, you're on an extreme diet and leptin goes very, very low. Or two, you're on an extreme binge, like the average American maybe, and leptin goes too high. In both of those cases, whether leptin is really, really low from dieting or whether leptin is really, really high from overeating and not exercising, you get the same effect. And I'm going to stop here so you can understand why. Low leptin and very, very high leptin are both going to cause the same effect in the body. Does anyone know why? Anyone know why? It's called hormone resistance. When leptin gets too high, the body loses its sensitivity to leptin. And now the brain can no longer get the signal that leptin is there. So it treats it like leptin isn't there. That's why too low leptin and too high leptin both result in the same thing. What do they result in? Well, if the brain is not getting the signal that leptin is there, either because leptin is way too low or leptin is way too high, what are you going to do? Your body's going to say, hey, looks like we don't have any fat on our body. We better eat more. It's also going to go to the adrenals and say, hey, looks like we don't have any fat on our body. Let's de decrease our metabolic rate. It's going to go to the, the thyroid and say the same thing. And so this is what happens when you push somebody too far into the eat less, exercise more approach. Can you guys see clearly that the eat less, exercise more approach to dieting when taking to the extreme will cause the exact same changes in your physiology as the eat more, exercise less will do? Can you guys see that? Does that make sense? Both of those approaches are potentially problematic for the body. And this is what causes yo-yo weight regain. Because what the body is doing here is essentially saying, whoa, we're starving. Let's make sure we recap, recoup all of our lost fat. The brain signals more hunger. You get more cravings and your metabolic rate decreases. This is what's known as metabolic compensation. This is what causes yo-yo weight regain. This is why the eat less, exercise more model taking to the extreme ends up in weight regain in 95% of dieters and ends up in weight regain plus some fat in 66% of dieters. You cannot win that game. And this is what the whole purpose of this is. And part of what's going on is the thyroid is responsible for this. So do you guys sort of understand now why the eat less, exercise more approach when taken to the extreme in the end is going to cause issues? Now, so hopefully now you understand normal metabolism, how the metabolism acts like a thermostat. It does not act like a chemistry lab. It does not act like a calculator. It acts like a thermostat. It's feeding back. It's adaptive and reactive constantly, and the thyroid plays a big role in that.